Welcome back to P3. Today we're starting Unit 7 Integration and we're looking at Integrating Standard Functions. This is Unit 7.1. Now here I've got a list of all the integrations so far. Now these are the ones based on what you already know, like this first one here, and the ones that you've picked up through the differentiations that we've been doing, which are the rest of them. Remember that the majority of these are in your formula booklet, so you don't have to learn them, but it does make your life a lot easier when you do because you start to recognize them within some of the questions. Now, the first one works for all values of n except for when n equals negative one. And when it does equal negative one, that's when we are looking at this second one. One over x is when x is to the power negative one. So just a reminder there. Second thing where students often go wrong is between the sine and cos. Because if you remember, sine differentiates the cos, therefore cos will, diff will integrate to sine. And the other one, cos differentiates to negative sine, so sine will integrate to negative cos. And this change of sign is where students will often go wrong. They forget which one it is. They get mixed up with the differentiation and the integration. So you just need to be careful with that one. Personally, I always remember the differentiation, sign into positive cos, cos into negative sign. Remember the differentiation, and then it's just applying the reverse to the integration. Okay, nice easy one to get us started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change what I've got on the bottom of my fractions to the top so that I can integrate them nicely. And I'm just going to call this one I so I can come down here and talk about it. So I now equals sine x to the minus 2 plus x to the minus 2 dx. At least that's what I'd love to do at the start, you know, if I jump into this question too quickly. But what I should be thinking of is actually what's going on here. Sine squared, or 1 over sine squared, if you remember 1 over sine is cosec, so 1 over sine squared is cosec squared x. And that's quite important, as I can integrate cosec squared x quite easily. It's one of my standard functions that we just listed. Okay, so cosec squared x integrates to negative cot x. And this is what I mean about learning these. Okay, you have got them in your formula booklet, but if you don't learn them, you might not spot such an easy maneuver to make. Now, my second part is quite easy. I'm going to add 1 to the power and divide by that power and then plus c so i've got minus cot x minus x to the minus one plus c or a better way to write it will be minus cot x minus one over x plus c these two lines are obviously the same i'm only doing this second line because one, it's nicer to write it without the negative power, but more importantly, it's in the same form of the question. Okay, second example. Nice, straightforward one. Um, what I like to do here is take this constant out. So I'm actually thinking of integrating then just e to the 2x. Just to save a little bit of confusion, I prefer it. It's up to you whether you do. It makes no difference. But it's nice to take that constant out. e to the power 2x. Now, when I differentiate or integrate, it's always going to stay the same. So I've got 3, and I'm going to end up with e to the power 2x. Now, if I was differentiating, I would end up multiplying by this 2x, or multiplying by the differential of this 2x, which is 2. So when I'm integrating, I'm going to be dividing by that. So it's going to become 1 over 2. So my final answer then is 3 over 2 e to the 2x plus c. Now my third example has limits. So we can see them here. 
and here. And what's important is that this is a trigonometric function, so you must use radians. Okay, and you can see that they are in radians in terms of my limits, but you also need to make sure your calculator is in radians as well. Okay, if you leave in degrees, then you're going to end up getting these types of questions wrong. So again, I'm just going to take the 3 outside first when I'm dealing with this sine 2x. Now, sine differentiates the cos, so sine will integrate to negative cos. So this is going to integrate to negative cos 2x. And then when I differentiate, I would multiply by the 2. So when I'm integrating, I'm going to divide by the 2. So you're just thinking you're doing the opposite rules. Now, I'm not a plus C in this one because I've got limits. So replace that and make sure you use your square brackets. And then you put your limits on your square brackets. Again, I've seen people in the past not using the square brackets and you should be. So here we've got now minus 3 over 2 cos 2 pi. When I substitute pi in, minus, and minus 3 over 2 cos, and we've got 2 times pi by 2. So the 2s will cancel, just leaving me pi there. And then you can use your calculator, or in this case, some of your knowledge. Cos of 2 pi is 1, and cos of pi is negative 1. So this will change to a plus 3 over 2. That means we've got minus 3 over 2, minus 3 over 2. So we've got minus 6 over 2, or minus 3. Now, another thing to remember is that if you have the Casio calculator that is a 991, whether that's an old version or a newer version, you have the ability to check your differentials or your integrations as long as they have limits. It can't solve any problems for you. It is allowed in exams. It just gives you a numerical answer. So if you put this into, or better to say this one, the original into your calculator with the limits and your calculator in radians mode and press equals, it will give you this answer of negative three. And then you know you haven't made any mistakes. So it's useful if you have that calculator to use it as a check-in tool.